friends. Welcome to the Connected Families podcast. I'm your host, Stacey Bellward. Our purpose in this podcast is to guide you to receive God's grace and truth, and then to equip you to pass that grace and truth on to your children. I'm so glad that you are here with us today. Well, we're here in September, which means that our main course, Discipline That Connects with Your Child's Heart, is open for registration right now. Go to connectedfamilies.org for all the details or our show notes. Well, here is the thing. Registration for this cohort is open right now. And the next time that you can join a cohort will be one year from now. I'll talk about that more in the course later. And we're going to have our guest today do an extra little interview at the end. So stay tuned for that. But today's show is going to look at consequences. We get a lot of questions about giving consequences, the when, the how, what is a right consequence? What is an age appropriate consequence? <laughs> Lots of questions I know parents have. Well, this falls into the fourth layer of the Connected Families Framework called Correct. So if you are familiar with the framework, then you already know that there's kind of two parts to the framework. One is the action parents take in this level. It is to correct. And then there's a message that comes out of that action. And this message is you are responsible for your actions. All right. Well, to talk about this topic, consequences, I invited two special people, Chad Hange and Katie Wetzel, and I will bring them up on right now. Hi, Chad. Welcome. Hey, how's it going, Stacy? Good to be with you. It is good to have you here. It's been a little while. You've been on the podcast many, many times as you are on our leadership team here and you are the head of the coaching certification program among a lot of different things that you do here at Connected Families, but we're I'm glad to have you here, Chad. Yeah, good to be here. Katie Wetzel, welcome to the podcast. You are a certified Connected Families parent coach. Among many other things, I'll let you introduce yourself, but we're so glad you're here. And then we're going to talk about your role with the Discipline That Connects online course too. So hi, Katie. Hi. Hi. Thanks for having me. Tell me a little bit what you do. I know you have a specialization around anxiety also. Yeah. So, right. I am a parent coach certified through Connected Families and uh, I have special training in helping parents learn how to support their kids through anxiety, whether, you know, that's kind of day to day or developmental kind of anxiety, or even if it's to the level of anxiety disorders like OCD. And we've talked about this on previous podcasts have, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you can go back and search for Katie or anxiety and you've been on some of those podcasts and your nursing background, you're a nurse practitioner. Is that right, Katie? That helps lend itself to that specialization. Mm-hmm. Yeah. My, uh, my whole nursing experiences in pediatric nursing. And I was a pediatric nurse practitioner for several years and also a nursing professor. So I help new nurses learn how to care for families and support parents in caring for their kids. We're really glad that you're in our community now. I'm really excited about this conversation because we have so many questions. And I know from being around a little while that this topic is usually the reason that parents come to us here at Connected Families. <laughs> yeah. Right, Chad? Right on. What <laughs> so do we they do? They have a problem <laughs> and they would like it fixed. And it's <laughs> usually very behavior based. So what does that look like? What are parents struggling with these days? Yeah, well, I think the number one question, right, and it's packaged in all sorts of fill in the blanks, but, you know, typically is what should I do when or how do I get my child to either start doing this behavior I really want to see happen, or how do I get them to stop doing this behavior over here that I really would like to see them, you know, stop doing. So whether it's start doing homework, start taking responsibilities, start cleaning the room, stop annoying their siblings, you know, stop screens. There's a wide range of possibilities, but it but it oftentimes just starts with, what should I do? I yeah. need help doing this thing. And we get that, don't we, Katie? I mean, we are all parents, all three of us here, and we understand the struggle. The thing is that Connected Families doesn't start at this layer, do we? Where do we usually start? Katie, what is going on in me? (laughs) (laughs) Yes. If anyone's Uh, listened to this podcast for very long, they've heard that many times. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, man, where we start from has a big impact on where we go and what we're building on and how we're received. Mm-hmm. You know, you can tick all the boxes, do the textbook right thing. But if, if I'm not coming from 
a healthy place, a good place, a gospel centered place in me, Mm -hmm. I'm going to have a very different outcome. And so it's so crucial. So good. So that's why we have a framework here at Connected Families. We have a foundation with the message, you are safe with me. Then we move to loved and called and capable. They each have messages. We've covered them in the last two episodes. And so that's why we're we're super, we feel good about coming to correction in this episode. So hey, everybody, if you're just starting here, please go back. Listen to the last two. <laughs> this is what we do, even in the discipline that connects with your child's heart online course. We start at the bottom with what's going on in me and we're layering it on so that by the time we get to the top, this layer that we're dealing with today, the correction and the message, you are responsible for your actions. We've got a solid foundation to come to our child with. And we're going to dig into that today. We're going to think more about that. So let's start off with a question. Like how do we, I say we, Katie, Chad, us connected families, how do we think about correction through the framework? Yeah, I think the key thought, and we've got key thought with each of the four messages that we talk about, but the key thought, especially around correction and then the message, child, you're responsible for your actions, is that effective discipline puts responsibility on the child to right their wrongs. So child, if you've made something wrong, and believe me, we will all make some things wrong, right? This isn't even just about kids, but it's it's like... If you made something wrong, it's your responsibility then to make it right. Just talk a minute about we're all going to make something wrong. We're all sinners, correct? We're born sinners. We are going to sin. Our kids are going to sin. We're not going to get away from that. And yes. so then how do we make right what we've made wrong? Go ahead, keep going. Yeah. So I think that, you know, not being surprised when our kids mess up, okay, just as we sh- we're not surprised likely when we mess up either, but when we've messed up, there's a responsibility to bring restoration back to that relationship. And in, in connected families, we oftentimes use our hands clasped, like we're putting them together, we're praying, we're in right relationship with people. And then somebody does something or maybe more than one person do things that break relationship. And now we're separated. Our hands are apart from each other. And it's the responsibility of the people or person who who kind of broke that to bring it back together, to bring uh, and restore that. And the, I think the gospel just comes alive when we start talking about restoration and being reconciled and uh, receiving forgiveness and offering forgiveness. And so I think that, again, that key thought, effective discipline puts responsibility on the child to right their wrongs is where we're focusing. Yeah. And I love the verse Galatians 6, 7. Because it says God won't be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. And so we take a lot of our correction philosophy from that and that key thought or that message that comes out of it. You are responsible for your own actions. It's you reap what you have sown. And so then that comes to the restoration that you were talking about. I think that's, that's good. Do you have anything to add, Katie? One thing that's been really helpful for me in these moments where I'm needing to work out what the consequence yeah. <laughs> is and should be or, or let be. And one is to just come with a supportive posture, right? To consider how can I create an environment that helps my kid make this right? Mm. that allows them to make it right. Because a lot of times I know for me, I can tend to be over responsible and feel like it's up to me to make sure I nip this in the bud and don't let them get away with it and all that. I put all this responsibility on me, but really my responsibility is to create a supportive environment for them to learn from their wrongs and to feel empowered to correct them. And so sometimes that means I do less. (laughs) Sometimes that means I do more, but it all depends on what would help them learn and gain in the restoration process of this. How can I support that instead of making things, you know, being the one to force things? Because I'm not responsible. I think that's a big shift parents can make, right? If the message is you are responsible for your actions, guess what? That means me, the mom, I am not (laughs) responsible for my child's actions. And I am not responsible to make sure those actions are Mm -hmm. right all the time. But I am responsible for how I respond and how I support them and encourage them and empower them. You know, what is my responsibility is a great question when we're sorting that out. 
Ooh, yeah. yes. Yeah, I think that's good. And I think that, you know, just, just bringing those Galatians verses in here, that God won't be mocked, a man reaps what he sows. So our kids clearly need to understand there's a sowing and a reaping principle in life. And it's really important that they get that, understand it. You know, and coming out of the fruit of the spirit conversation in Galatians 5, uh, we get to Galatians 6, 6.1, 6, it says, brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in sin... You who live by the Spirit should restore that person gently. gently. Somebody's caught in sin and it's not like, aha, I caught you, right? Doing this bad thing. It's like, no, there's a repetitive thing. This is going on. You're kind of caught, stuck in sin. Those of us who live by the Spirit should restore that person gently. So we start thinking and looking through the lens of like, what does gentle restoration look like as an as an end goal here of our of our correction? catching our kids in sin. I mean, that's a big one, right? Come on. Why isn't the garbage out? Why isn't it out right now? You know, yes. like, it's not like, ha ha, I caught you, but sometimes it's, it's a different tone of anger, right? Like I got, you didn't do it again. Yeah. Or there's a compassion too. We, we see our kids struggling with the same thing over and over. And mm-hmm. it's like, oh, wow, they're maybe stuck in this pattern or they're, you know, not doing the things that we're asking them to do, or their, you know, their words are quick to their quick to speak with anger and insult and Mm -hmm. their hurtful words. Okay. So how do we help bring restoration to that? Not just the punitive, I hope you hurt so bad. You never do that again. Right. Kind of response, but one that builds wisdom and grows connection in our families. We talked a little bit about how at Connected Families, we go through the first three layers of the framework before we get to correct the foundation, connection, coaching. And one of the teachings, as I dove into the framework in the beginning, that was so powerful for me in transforming how I corrected was the teaching around teamwork. Because kind of as we we said a little bit earlier, if it's my responsibility to make sure the behavior of my kids is correct, then that comes across full of anxiety and full of control. And and it's awful. I don't show up the way that I want to for sure. But if I can look at this as teamwork, I am on your side. We are a team in life. And so I'm thinking always about what's best for you and getting to what you, I think it was you that just said it, Katie, wisdom building. If that's the goal, wisdom building, then I can come along with my child and it doesn't even matter what the issue is. It could be just kind of like blatant doesn't do the task that they were asked to do, you know, a room cleaning, a homework, a misuse of the phone, whatever it is, teamwork changes how I show up in correction. I love that. It reminded me of, you know, one thing with my kids being in school is I want to protect them, their love of learning. Like I want them to enjoy learning and it to be a positive experience. And so I need to enjoy learning. And so coming alongside my kids, I can enjoy what I learn as they're learning, <laughs> what they're learning, mm-hmm. that we can share in that joy of learning. I can be a part of that too. What does that look like, Katie? What do you mean? You love learning like, oh, I need to respond different. Or you're actually like, oh, I can love learning algebra again. Just having grace for myself that I don't have to have it all figured out. You know, that Got it. sometimes with my kids, well, that's not fair. Okay, well, this is what's important. What would be more fair? What would help you learn how important this is? Mm-hmm. What would help you make this right? You know, so with my older kids, sometimes I open up for negotiation. <laughs> yeah. Or, you know, is it really unfair or is it just hard? And sometimes I don't know what the solution is. Like, this has got to get better. You know, let's bring some storm, some ideas. And yeah. so it's fun to see. Again, those questions, you'll have a whole course. You two are the questions experts. <laughs> yeah. Questions as a way to help my children take responsibility and to yeah. open me up to learning from them, how they answer, what their ideas are. That's a great pairing to teamwork. Because Mm -hmm. I don't have to have all the solutions then. We might get to it later, but I don't also have to have all the solution like to know exactly what the right consequence is for this. We're going to get into that, like (laughs) how we have shape a conversation around consequences. But if I start with a teamwork, we're in this together. Right. And I'm in this because I want to grow wisdom in you. There's three questions that we teach in the discipline that connects with your child's heart online course. I'm going to say the whole title probably (laughs) way too many times in this episode. (laughs) We teach three questions, three key questions that will help restoration be at the heart of disciplining misbehavior. Okay. So we've already talked about restoration as one of our goals. 
So what are three questions that guide us to that? A lot of times I start with a quick check in myself. Okay. Am I wanting to just do a power move right now, which is usually where I start. Yeah, <laughs> I feel that honest, temptation, right? right? Yeah. I feel that temptation to get into the power struggle. But then I, I ask myself that, is this a power move or am I really trying to support my child? Am I really for them? And I think what can happen is it's kind of checking myself too. Am I feeling overprotective where I have a lot of compassion for my child's struggle, but I may be struggling with some discouragement, that some low confidence in their ability to make this right. I might feel discouraged. Like they can never do this. They always do it. checking for words like that for some low confidence words that I'm doubting my child's ability to succeed. Mm-hmm. And the other thing I check for too, is sometimes a demanding posture where like, I know they can do it. Why aren't they doing it? And, and so I have a lot of confidence in my child's ability in that posture, but I don't have a lot of compassion for their struggle in doing in applying their skills or doing what they're capable of. I'm probably going to end up missing a key piece of the puzzle that would allow me to support them in making it right in getting to that restoration. And so that's usually kind of a quick check of myself. Is this a power move or am I coming in to support Am I having compassion and confidence, which are those steps of the framework, right? Mm -hmm. That is the connect is the compassion and the coach is that confidence. Mm -hmm. So making sure it's a really quick check I could do to kind of walk through those steps of the framework to make sure I'm ready to, to address the consequences. I love that. That's taking the what's going on in me just one step further. And am I ready? Okay. So the first question then that we can ask is what is the natural impact of the behavior? Now, a lot of times people kind of mess up that phrase natural impact and they might say natural consequences or, you know, but, but maybe Chad, would you unpack that? What is the natural impact of the behavior? Define natural impact first. Yeah, the natural impact is is the thing that's going to happen regardless of whether you do anything or not. The natural impact to a child touching the hot stove or playing with fire is that they get burned. And that's just what happens. I didn't have to do anything to help learning take place here. I didn't have to engage in any way. What happened is the lesson got learned. And by the way, my mom told me to not touch the hot iron and I touched it and I I cried and whatever. And then I went back for another one just to see if it was just to see if it was always hot or not. And and it was again. So sometimes the natural impact doesn't exactly teach the lesson right away, but it does over time. But again, it's just that no parent intervention. We don't really need to do anything here. Now, sometimes, and I think there's a natural impact for almost almost all misbehavior, but sometimes the the natural impact may not be enough to like teach the the lesson or help grow the wisdom. So if you lie to me, I'll likely trust you less. For some kids, that might not matter a lot right in the moment. It's like, well, okay. Or if you hit your sibling, they might not want to be around you. It's a natural impact, but we might need to engage that a little bit further in order to uh, allow for restoration or for wisdom building to take place. So there might be an additional parent intervention that that takes place there. Yeah, I think of that intervention as kind of helping them notice, Hmm. right? The natural impacts are there, but I might need to help them notice what those things are. Like you said, the trust, helping point that out, that that's my experience of you not being truthful, right? Mm -hmm. Or, Or someone else you're in relationship with. Or even I love the idea of thinking this when we talk about affirmation too. So I'm sure you talked about that before in some of the other steps, but it's the same thing, right? We help our kids notice the good consequences of their behavior and we help them notice the more difficult consequences yeah. of their behavior. And we're, we're just articulating, drawing their attention, not to shame them, not to see, I told you, if you touch that yes. alert, you know, but mm-hmm. like oh, lamenting with them. I love that word word (laughs) Mm. and lamenting with, oh man, it hurts when you get burned. Oh, sweet child. What Mm. can we do to make sure this doesn't happen again? How do you want to, you know, helping them notice and helping them again, move towards building wisdom from it. Well, what I like about it too, is that you asked the question, you didn't tell them, you didn't say, so you better not do that again, or you don't want to do that again. It's like, well, what have you learned? Uh, how do you want to keep this from happening again? And those are actually wisdom building questions that grow capacity for our child to have to think for themselves as well. Like, oh my goodness, look at your sibling's face right now. Does it look like they 
they were happy about that? Or does it look like they have a sad face about that? Right. I mean, there, there, there can be, it's like just that noticing mm-hmm. uh, and they might not notice. And I think the other thing you said, I just want to underscore uh, is, is that how we say that not in a shaming way or a blaming way, but that we're coming alongside, we're partnering uh, with our child tone and all those even nonverbals are, are really important there. Sharing the times that we messed up, maybe in a similar way. Yeah, I get yeah. you. I remember when I did it. Yeah. And I think that's really helpful part of making sure we're not talking about consequences only in the negative. Mm-hmm. I definitely have heard my daughter come home from a play date and so-and-so's little brother was doing this and he had to have consequences. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I was like, oh, it's not quite the same way we talk about it, is it? Yeah. And I think what's helpful is is joining them with them. You can help take that painful thing and point them towards hope, towards mm-hmm. the restoration, which we'll get into more. You know, I hear it as we're talking now, like, yes, that's painful, but there's hope. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. but we can learn from this. We can gain from this painful thing. So we haven't said it exactly yet, but these questions are questions that we talk about. So that's why we're diving into them. I remember when my girls were little, like understanding me, being able to name the natural impact. They Sometimes they just didn't know. They did not have an idea of what it was. And so it's very fine to mm-hmm. offer some ideas about what the natural impact of that could have been. Um, Because I think that's maturity, right? That's growing up and understanding it. And so at different ages, they just don't know. Yeah, I'm going to pull in my nursing hat and just bring in key around the age of six. They're really working on cause and effect because their brain is wired to work, start working out cause and effect because they're not always able to do that correctly. And so it's really important that we're working with them to make those connections because their brain is trying to make those connections. And then our preteens, our preteens are also going through a surge in learning that age nine to 13, making those connections. And so sometimes they misconnect things. And we need to be a part of that process of of them connecting things correctly. (laughs) That makes sense. That does good. Oh, I think. Thanks for that, Katie. I appreciate that. Okay, let's do the second question and then we'll go to a break. But the second question is, what action is needed to make it right? Again, I would say I would say the same thing again. Sometimes baffled the the kids would be, I don't know. I don't know what to do to make it right. And so we'd offer options, but yeah. So let's dive into this one. So what actions needed to make it right? We started thinking through, you know, misbehaviors, maybe it's hurtful words. So what are some ways that you can, you can bless with your words, coaching clients that, that I have, there's always good stories, right. Of, of parents who are working on helping their kids recognize that they've made it wrong. It's their responsibility to make it right. So, you know, what are some some true things that you can say about uh, that that person that you have now in maybe anger or frustration have spoken these hurtful words? Now, what are some ways that you can actually bless with those words? And I got a picture from a, a coaching client probably six months after we had been working through the peace process and helping kids resolve conflict well. And they sent me a picture of their daughter with a big back massager on the brother. And and the, they've been talking about make it right consequence. If you hurt somebody physically, it's your responsibility to bless them, maybe serve them with your hands. And so uh, the backstory was the sister pushed the brother off the trampoline and they were very angry with each other. They started to work through the peace process, started to recognize and even talking amongst themselves what would make it right since she had made it wrong. And then I get this picture of the their make it right consequence was the back massager on little brother. Okay, that's diligence. That's six months of work working and helping kids to understand if you make it wrong, it's your responsibility to make it right. But they, you know, they said this is the first time and that we know of where our kids had a big conflict and they actually solved it, worked it out, and then walked through this restoration process of not just saying, sorry, 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 right? Or, okay, I'm sorry, gee, uh, right? It's just like that, not that true heartfelt repentance that we're really looking for. It's just a lie to get out of trouble, say these words and move on. So it, it really is a focus on bringing it back together, bringing that and restoring that relationship. I love that story. And I've seen the picture (laughs) and the little girl, I mean, I don't know how old they were, but she looks to me maybe about six and she's massaging her older brother who she had pushed off the trampoline. Who's going to be seven or eight, maybe. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. So Chad, should she have gotten the consequence also to like, no, you can't be on the trampoline for two days. 
Yeah, you know, I think it's one, how that consequence would be given would be an important piece. Okay, mm-hmm. so I'm sick and tired of this and you can't be on the trampoline for two two days because of how you've been doing this to your brother and all this stuff. Mm-hmm. Right? That will not be helpful in terms of learning. But if this, is a, if this is a pattern and it's repeated, there might be a privilege that gets removed for a little bit. It might be, hey, I've just been noticing and I'm wondering and here's the thing. And since this has happened several times, I think a break from the trampoline might be this and we can figure out something else else you can do? Or is there a way that you can bless your brother or cheer your brother on while he's doing the trampoline? But yeah, there might need to be a break, but I'll, I'll come back to it repeatedly. How consequences are given is so, so yeah. important. It's why we work through those first three messages. You're safe with me. Am I a safe parent giving a consequence here? Or am I kind of out of control, angry, frustrated? You know, and is my child experiencing your love no matter what? Hey, am I understanding what's it like to be the child? And then have I taught some new skills here with your called and capable? And then we get to that, that consequence. So yeah, maybe, maybe the consequence also is that you are no longer allowed to be on the trampoline for a little bit, but yeah, that could be the next thing that we're going to talk about too, in terms of privileges. Yeah. I would say this was really hard for me when I started out with connected families, because I wasn't given that kind of opportunity. There was maybe a exact way. I had to make it right or else kind of thing, Mm -hmm. (laughs) but it wasn't in the same vein. It definitely wasn't as thoughtful like this. And so it was hard at first to think in this way and to come up with ideas. And so the connected families resources, the books, the podcasts, the blogs, all those things were really helpful because there's lots of stories and examples talking to friends about their challenges and them finding make it right consequences. I know after the course that we're promoting, (laughs) there is a Facebook group group where people ask these kind of questions. And so, you know, this is not a solo effort. Doing this in a community of believers and compassionate parents is really helpful for coming up with these kind of ideas. Just one one additional thought here is that as a family, as we talk about teamwork, right? It's like, this is a conversation you're going to have with the family. It's like, hey, we're going to mess up sometimes and we're going to have to make it right. Or we want to make it right to get that restored relationship again. Let's just brainstorm some things. If we hurt people with our words, or if we say or do things that are unhelpful, or we don't do this thing over here, like let's just start brainstorming some make it right sorts of consequences that that we would all be held accountable to. Uh, and maybe you just draw it out of a, a hat. I don't, I don't know, but you've got yeah. 10 or 15 mm-hmm. possibilities that everybody says, yeah, this would be something that that we would consider doing in terms of just that restoration. So it doesn't have to be this surprise. I think that's where yeah. parents are like, well, what should I do now? I yeah. have to come up with one right now. It's like, no, let's be thoughtful. We know these things are going to happen. So let's let's uh, give some thought and teamwork it a little bit. Yeah. When you said we, I was like, oh, that means me too. <laughs> yes. well, that means I, I need be- to make it right. Yeah. Oh, we definitely do have to make it right. (laughs) And if it was our family cup, it would be like Starbucks, like a trip to Starbucks together at the table with the, with the drink. I like all of that. (laughs) Here's what I want to just say is this can be such a perspective shift for parents, especially when we've been raised, like there needs to be a consequence for that behavior, right? You need to pay for that behavior. But if our new standard is you are responsible for your own actions. How can you make right what you made wrong? Then if there's reconciliation, if the six-year-old massages the seven-year-old's back and their relationship is now back together, did she make right what she made wrong? Yes, done. It's done then. And so I, as a parent, I'm peaceful. It's done. Let's move on. There doesn't have to be a big consequence. And, and that's a beautiful new way to look at, at correction. Yeah. Brings a lot more peace. Okay. You guys, we need to go to a break. So hang tight and we'll get to our question number three in just a second. Hey parent, whether your child is two or 12 or 17, you know that occasionally they are going to misbehave. How you respond during those moments of misbehavior can actually grow your child's heart closer to you or rather sometimes build walls between you. This is what we teach in our eight session moderated online course called Discipline that connects with your child's heart. You'll be equipped to handle the messiness of parenting with confidence so that you come away thinking, wow, that went so much better. When you're done with the course, you'll have the tools to integrate these four core messages into all of your parenting. You are safe with me. You are loved no matter what. 
You are called and capable, and you are responsible for your actions. We integrate biblical truth and brain science to equip you to lead your family with God's grace and truth. Register soon. The course launches on Tuesday, October 4th. Your kids will thank you. Check out connectedfamilies.org for all the information so that you can register today. We're here back after the break, and we have just been going through three questions that parents can have a conversation with their kids. They can be sort of a frame around when our kids misbehave, how do we want to guide them towards restoration? And the first question was, what is the natural impact of the behavior? We're working to grow wisdom in our kids. Like how did their behavior impact the world if there was no influence or no action by a parent? Okay. And the second question was what action is needed to make it right? We just got done with that one. So the third question is what related lost privilege might help motivate a child to make it right? There's a little bit of context here, isn't there, Chad? It's the context of the child going, "Uh uh-uh, I don't care. I don't want to make it right. I'm not the one that was wrong. Like, you know, and that's going to happen, right? Mm Because we are all sinful and we've got emotions. So can you just shape that a little bit more? Yeah. So loss of privilege, I think it, it, there's a couple different ways that loss of privilege can, can work. We just talked a little bit about, Hey, maybe you're going to lose the privilege of being on the trampoline because you have this issue seems to continue to rise. And so we're going to teach you some new skills while you're also not going to have that privilege for a little bit. In this context, where we're talking about natural impact leading to a make it right consequence. Sometimes our kids aren't ready to make it right. Sometimes I'm not ready to make it right as a parent. And Mm so I might need to offer a pause here for my child. And so the loss of that privilege is really about why don't you take a time out around this privilege or we're going to we're going to suspend that a little bit. And then when you're ready to make it right, that privilege will actually come back to you. So just practically two kids squabbling, saying very hurtful things to each other, coming to the parent and saying, hey, one of the kids coming and saying, hey, dad, I want to go to the park. My friends are over there and uh, I want to want to head over there and and be with them. And in that situation, the parent might say, oh, wow, that sounds fantastic. You know, I know how much you love the park and your friends. I did hear some squabbling and some pretty hurtful words being said. And I wonder where y'all are at with that. Have you made that right with each other or is that still lingering? And the child might say, oh, yeah, yeah, we're good. We're good. Right. And another (laughs) child might say, no, we haven't. Right. Yeah. That in that case, the, the privilege of going to the park is going to be suspended until the make it right happens over here. And so what I what I would find is that the Holy Spirit really works well in terms of sometimes that that conviction and true repentance when there's just a, a little pause on some of the privileges. And I would see 10 or 15 minutes later, somebody come back with true repentance as opposed to the initial one being like, fine, sorry, right? But we're going to put that on pause and then we're going to give some space here. And then when you've made it right, uh, that privilege is, is back in play and go to the park and blessings and enjoy, you know, your time. Yeah. I find that pause helpful for me as a parent too, sometimes. Absolutely. Yeah. Sometimes that pause, I'm, I think about it. I'm like creating space for us to work on whatever they're not valuing to put more energy into that value. Like if my son's fighting with his brothers and wants to go have fun with his friends, like, well, we're going to pause playing with friends because we need to invest a little more in loving your brothers. Well, Mm -hmm. you know, thinking too, I was thinking about screen time. I know there's a lot of modern parents (laughs) that there are issues around screen time. And when I've again, try to think about it in a supportive way, I think, okay, you enjoy screen time. I enjoy giving you screen time, but it does have an impact on your brain. And so when you're not honoring limits or you're having meltdowns after, we need to take a pause for that privilege. One, to help you you know that you're okay without it, <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> that yes. this isn't a need, it's a want. Give time for your brain to regulate. And it gives me as a parent some accountability. Like, am I being a little too loose? Am I not being monitoring well enough? I have, have I been letting this slide? Mm-hmm. And so it gives me a chance to make it right too on my end of supporting my child and learning how to manage their time well, manage their resources well, manage their relationships well. I think that's great. I feel like let's go through it. Aren't the three layers into that example of screen time? And we you, you mentioned the natural impact is there. Right. Yeah, right? yeah, Your that's brain. true. <laughs> Your brain, that's there. So then the second question is what is needed to make it right? So was it a misuse of 
screens, like used it too long or used it where you're not supposed to maybe. So then what action is needed to make that right? What would that look like for you, Katie? You know, a lot of times thinking of a million examples, but, but uh-huh. one that relates to what you're saying is like a lot of times they didn't get their laundry done. Oh, they yeah. wanted to do game time first. And I was like, okay, well you, I expect you to have your laundry done right after. And then they go over time and they don't get the laundry done. And so then, you know, all right, we're going to take a break on game time and we're going to do a few extra chores yeah. to help you, you know, practice yeah. making this a priority and, yeah. and help you remember <laughs> to make sure you're covering those things and valuing those things. And so I might even ask them to help me with mine right? Like if I had to do it because we had some kind of time limit, then the next thing is then they can honor me by giving me back that time Mm. that I took helping them. We can help each other, right? Mm -hmm. We all need help sometimes. So that would be like a a make it right, either giving me back that time by helping me in a chore or again, reestablishing that routine, that responsibility. I love, we talked about teamwork in the beginning. I love how teamwork infiltrates this whole conversation Mm -hmm. because, you know, we're together coming up with the natural impacts. We're then together coming up with how are you going to make it right? Do you, you know, do you need help? We can come together with a plan because that is such a different tone than if I, you need to, you know, you have to now do this and this, and I'm going to add two more chores. That's back to your tone that you were talking yes. about. Dad. No, <laughs> yeah. this was yeah. okay. Yeah. Or it's just, you know, I think the other side of that spectrum is fine. Fine. Oh yeah. Fine. Okay. The lack of confidence, All right? Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I think that, you know, either side of that is really unhelpful. That's my natural tendency is to just go to, to lean in and go blah, 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 yeah. blah, 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 blah. Right. But I also see when in some of my coaching parents are just like, fine, I just do it myself. Okay. You know, and yeah. then kind of uh, throw these barbs in mm-hmm. <laughs> along the, the difference, way. The difference is just so huge because yeah. now it sounds like, well, we have a pad of paper here. Like, let's write down some options. Like, what are you thinking you want to do? How would you like to make it right? Oh, you you know, and we get a few down on the paper. One, no, I don't want to do that one. That'll take me too much time. I'm like, mm-hmm. all right, okay. You know, I'm like, no, I want no. you to do that one. No, put that back. <laughs> no, you get to pick mm-hmm. how you want to make it right. There's just so much autonomy. And, and so then there's so much more a part of the effort to make it right, which is restoration again, which is the goal of the whole thing. In my own coaching and in parents, maybe of uh, just preteens or early teens, you know, kids going, I'm not doing that. I'm not, you can't make me I'm not doing any of this stuff. And that usually is a signal too of a relationship that is a little bit more afraid and there's maybe less goodwill to go around. So I, I think that the reality can sometimes be the child's just like, I'm not going to do it. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to do it. You can't, you can't make me, you can't do that, you know, thing, or I'm not going to cooperate with this. Uh, and so I, I think it's worth at least saying, I think that's some, some parents reality is that that's where they find themselves. And then I think this kind of conversation can feel really frustrating yeah. at times because it's like, well, my child won't cooperate with that. And now what? Yeah. Yeah. I think it kind of goes back to something I was talking about with this bill. I think sometimes even with these older kids, it's hard to tolerate the discomfort of the natural impacts. Mm -hmm. It's hard to think about my child going through their whole day with their homework on the kitchen table and it's not there and it's not turned in and they're going to get in trouble and then they're going to feel bad. You know, like the little ways we take away those natural impacts or we take ownership that's really theirs. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that means we have to allow our children those natural consequences. Mm -hmm. but also our children are more capable than we give them credit for Mm. sometimes. (laughs) And when we take a second to consider where those boundaries are, what's my responsibility and what's theirs. Sometimes it is painful for them, but sometimes they figure it out. They find the motivation, they find their reason and they find success. So I think sometimes I can feel guilty when I'm not there for my child, but a lot of times I get to celebrate with them that they figured it out. Mm -hmm. Uh, (laughs) And I get to celebrate with them that they learned from that hard thing that, yes, I've got to remember to put my homework in my backpack, but I was okay. It wasn't the best thing to happen to me today, but it didn't ruin my life, you know? And so I think it's hard when our kids push back, but it's an opportunity for us to say, okay, what is my responsibility? What is theirs? Yes. Mm -hmm. And what can, what can I allow? them to learn from. 
I remember Katie, man, there were a number of times in one season of my kid's life that I would get the call, mom, I forgot my lunch. Okay. As a mom, is it just cruel and unusual punish? Like what happens if I don't bring them lunch? Oh, like, food is a big one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they can yeah. miss one meal. They'll have others. Yeah. Right. And I, <laughs> I did that. And you know, they didn't really forget lunches very often until almost never. And then when they did for sure, I'll bring you your lunch. Everyone makes a mistake sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Again, the engagement with that and how we engage with that is so important. No, you forgot your lunch and you better not forget your lunch again because I'm not bringing your lunch or, you know, whatever. We, right. The thing about when, we, when we've got clear expectations and we uh, believe that our kids are actually capable and we treat them like that mm -hmm. and they're capable of being held accountable and responsible, yes. that there's so much freedom. I can become so much more empathetic. It's like, oh no, you forgot your lunch. I'm yeah. so sorry about that. Well, yes. Can you bring it? Can you bring it? You bring it, bring it. I need my lunch. I got to practice after school and I got all the things, right? And, and we just start going and, and we're just like, oh man, I've got some other things going on. And I guess I'm, I'm guessing you're going to be able to figure something out or, you yeah. know, whatever you need to do. And tomorrow, if there's a way that I can help you remember it, so you have a plan to remember, I'd be happy to do that. Right. And be okay with them not being okay. Yes. Saying, yeah. This is, this is so mean, or you never, and you always do this for my sibling, but you never do it. Okay. When I hear things like that, I hear that and I th and I, I used to think, oh my gosh, what is going on? Or this child is so ungrateful or whatever it is. Now I hear it as the person who ought to be upset about this is upset about this. And it doesn't have to be me. Right? I'm not upset about it. Uh -huh. And and that that I think is going to actually grow them and teach them far more than any message I'm sending about how they're forgetful and they ought to do this and they you know it's like just let it let it be encourage support but I don't have to own that which is the message that we want to communicate out of our correction you are responsible for your actions I love that ending to our podcast Chad Katie and Chad thanks so much for being here with us today we did a little bit of a deep dive, maybe more of just a conversation around these, these things that are taught in the discipline that connects with your child's heart online course. There's so much more. It goes way more in depth, even on that third question and how to deal with it when our kids aren't ready to make it right. And lots more tools in the course too. But anyway, Katie and Chad, thanks for being with me. Anytime I get to be on a podcast, I enjoy it. Anytime you bring a coach that's yeah. come through the certification, parent certification program, I yep. thoroughly enjoy that. So Katie, we just appreciate you and the work that you're doing and just your heart for, for parents and families. So mm. well, it's it. been a privilege and a pleasure for sure. Thanks for tuning in today, friends. I strongly suggest that you check out the show notes for the link to register for discipline that connects with your child's heart. Registration is open and the course starts in just a few weeks. Well, if the content in this podcast has been helpful, consider sharing the podcast information or the Discipline That Connects page with a friend. You guys know <laughs> doing these courses with a friend will make the learning deeper, stronger, and just be more fun, right, everybody? <laughs> well, before I close this podcast, I would like to take just a couple of minutes and do a tiny encore interview with Katie, who was the guest on this podcast, but she is the Discipline That Connects next online course moderator. And so let's just switch gears a little bit. Hey, Katie, welcome back. Katie, do you know that I was hired? My very first job was to be the moderator of Discipline That Connects. I don't know that I knew it was your very first job, but I remember taking it more than once and seeing you in the comments cheering <laughs> us on. <laughs> yeah, I was so new to Connected Families and the framework. And I was like, just trying to learn it and apply it and encourage everybody. And I've done a lot more, but since I took on the role of director of engagement, we brought on you, Katie, you were such a great fit, especially because you know the framework so well, having gone through the coaching certification program. But let me ask you a few questions because we're, we're coming to the end of September, our month of registration for the course. And so I want our listeners to kind of understand what your role is, because I think it's just so sets us apart from so many organizations that are doing online courses that they're like, sell it to you. And then you never hear from them again. That's not us. No, we build a community. No. Tell us like, what does moderating mean? What is your role with the course? 
Yeah. So I read every comment. Definitely make sure there's no bots or trolls trying to get in. I haven't seen that happen, but if, if they try, I'll find yeah. them, and kick them out. <laughs> yeah. But in that same vein is just making sure that this is a safe place for everyone to be heard, yeah. to be received with grace and compassion. Uh, Cause parenting is really a vulnerable thing, it's very mm-hmm. personal <laughs> and very mm-hmm. vulnerable. And everybody who engages, I want to make sure that, you know, we value you, we hear you and we embrace you as part of our community. Yeah. I can also help answer questions though. It's a great place. If you just have some logistical questions, I'm reading that too, and can kind of feel that to help make sure you're getting the most out of this course. Yeah. But you also know the content deeply. So if there's application or clarification, you got that. Oh yeah. I love one just to celebrate what you're learning, to tell you when you are right on, you are tracking, you are getting it, you are yeah. doing it. Yeah. <laughs> But also to maybe ask you some questions to dig a little deeper or to just maybe bring in some scripture. A lot of times what you're saying is the gospel coming out Mm -hmm. in your conversation. And I love to to kind of help connect that and encourage everyone in what you're saying and how it relates. Encourage people because we know, don't we, that parents are coming to the course discouraged. They're coming mm-hmm. with issues like they really want help. I did when I mm-hmm. took the course. And so I love that you come alongside them and we celebrate, pray over them. I do. You? I yeah. do. I hear, I hear the dis- discouragements, yeah. the struggle. And I want you to know that those are covered in prayer mm-hmm. too, which not every online course will do. Yeah, <laughs> right. Right. I'm telling you right now, I'm committed to pray for your families as you walk through this. I mean, you'll be sending an email every week to everyone to keep them on track and Mm -hmm. to encourage them. That's great too. I think that sets us apart for sure. I know another thing that parents love about the course, they say it every single time, is that they love the idea that, hey, we're not all alone on our own little parenting island with our own struggles, like coming into the course, typing in the comments, introducing ourselves and our family, and then hearing all the struggles really is like, hey, we're in this together. Yeah. It's really such a supportive environment. Again, I'm reading comments to make sure that is the response you're getting is support and grace. I think a lot of people feel uh, less alone when they share in the comments and people reach out like me too. I had the same question or that happened to us just yesterday, you know, and what uh, kind of parents are coming? What are their struggles? So that everyone listening knows yours isn't too big for us (laughs) and this community. It's not. Yeah, no, it's definitely a range. We have people asking about toddler meltdowns and Mm -hmm. and we have people who have strained relationships with their adult children who are looking at getting a new perspective on how to engage. People ask about sibling conflict, power struggles, big, intense feelings. (laughs) (laughs) Anger. (laughs) Anger is a big one, right? For the kids and the parents. Yeah, Yeah. some developmentally normal struggles, but also some trauma-related struggles that we address. Respectful communication. I'm thinking toddlers and teenagers again. Yeah. Yeah. And just really practical things, homework and chores. There's a lot of real and relatable struggles that are shared. and, And we're here to encourage you in all of them. Yeah, for sure. We have people all over the world. They're taking it yes. at the same time. That's really fun. That's incredible. It's yeah, so amazing. This, this curriculum crosses cultures, mm-hmm. so many cultures. Wait till you guys introduce yourself. You're like, what? Guatemala, Australia, Singapore, <laughs> yeah, South Africa. Like that's just a beautiful part of it. Also, we have adoptive families, foster families, lots of them, homeschool families. I mean, it's really the gamut of parents. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that come. So Katie, thank you so much for the work that you do in supporting our families. It's very much part of the connected families value system to grow mm-hmm. community and to care for the people in our community. And so you do that really well by moderating this course. And when people come into the course, we know they feel that like you're, you're not a stranger anymore. You're a family <laughs> when you come and take the course with us. Yes. So thanks for your role so much. 
Oh, you're welcome. It is, it's just such a privilege to get to know and come alongside, you know, the little bit that I do with these mm-hmm. families. I, I really value each and every one. Isn't Katie wonderful? We love her. Well, this is the last podcast that I will be talking about registering for the course for a really long time, everybody, even one year. So now really is the time to register and better yet, get a friend like I mentioned before. Well, for all the information about Discipline That Connects, go to our show notes or go to our website or hey, Facebook, Instagram, it's all over the place this month. So also connectedfamilies.org, you can go there. All right. Thanks for being with us today, everybody. I will see you next time.